More fun facts about mycotoxins than you can shake a strip test at. This is the Mycotoxin Minute. It's late winter in the Northern Hemisphere and something is lurking underfoot. This unseen predator is Claviceps purpurea. His weapons of choice are ergot alkaloids. And the opportunity he's waiting for is something that most of us usually look forward to, spring. Let me back up. When you think of claviceps and ergot alkaloid contamination, this is probably the image that springs to mind. This is a sclerotium. You can think of sclerotia as a kind of winter bomb shelter for the fungus. At the end of the previous growing season, they fall on the ground, often during harvest, and there they lie, protecting the fungus from the harshness of winter. When the days start to get a bit warmer and longer, the sclerotia germinate, producing mushroom-like fruiting structures we call parathecia. This makes it easy for the spores to hitchhike on the wind to flowering host plants such as rye, sorghum, wheat, and barley. Once the spore infects a flower, it enters a new stage. What happens then? That's a topic for a later mycotoxin minute, say around April or so when these plants are actually in flower. For more about claviceps, ergot alkaloids, and the strange vocabulary we use to describe them, visit us at romerlabs.com. See you next week.